A stack of books is a great example of the stack data structure. If you make a stack of books, the topmost book in the stack was the one that you put there last. If you remove that book from your stack's top, you would expose the book that was put there before the last book. Stacks are a first-in, first-out type of service. The last book you put on top of a stack would be the first book you take off the stack. Another example of a stack is your browser's back button. If you look up here, we just opened up Facebook.com, so we add it to the top of the stack of sites that we've already visited previously. We do stack.push. Push is one of the stack methods. You push Facebook on top of the stack. This middle is what it looks like when we are visiting Facebook. And then this bottom image is where we press the back button to navigate back to Twitter. So we pop off the most recent URL and we just leave Twitter at the top of it. The functions traditionally provided in this stack are push for placing data onto a stack, pop for removing the top element of a stack, peak for displaying the top element of a stack, and length or size for determining how many elements are on a stack. A nice feature of JavaScript is that the array object already has all the functions we need in order to use it as a stack. So you could just use an array as a stack. I will show you how to do this using an array, but then I will actually create a stack class and show you how that works too. I'm going to use an array stack to find words that are palindromes. A palindrome is a word that is spelled the same forwards and backwards, such as Bob, B-O-B, -B, or race car, R-A-C-E-C-A-R. Okay, so we have var letters equals an empty array, and that's the stack. Because remember, I said arrays are, have all the functions of a stack. So look at how this program works. First, we're going to set a word to be any word we want, and we're going to choose race car, which is a palindrome. And then we are going to have a variable, which is just a, a empty string for our word or reverse word. We're going to use the stack to fill up the R word variable with the reverse of the word variable. The first thing we're going to do is put the letters of the word into the stack. So we have a for loop here, and we're going to start at index 0 and go to the last index of the word length. So an index in a string is just which character we're looking at. So we're going to do letters, which remember is our stack, dot push, the stack function where you push something on top of the stack, and we're going to push word index i. So that's just going to take, this for loop is just going to take each letter of our word, because we have index 0, index 1, index 2, each letter is a new index, and push it onto the letter stack. Now we are going to pop off the stack in reverse order so we can create the R word variable, which is the, the reverse of the word variable. Another for loop. And now we are going to have the R word and we're going to add one letter at a time from the stack by popping off the top letter. And because they were put in order, they're going to be popped off in reverse order. Now we have a string that should be the reverse of the, the, the first word. So word and our word should be reverse of each other. Now to check if it's a palindrome, we just say if our word equals 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 word, it is a palindrome, or else it's not a palindrome. So let's run that and see what happens. And race card is a palindrome. But if we change that to free code camp and run that, nope, it's not a palindrome. Okay, that was just a basic usage of a stack using an array. Now I will show you how to implement a stack in JavaScript so you can understand stacks a little more. You probably would never do that because you can use an array as a stack, but this should possibly help you understand how stacks work a little better. So here's where we're going to create the stack, which is going to be this function here. We're going to have two variables, this.count and this.storage. Now this dot storage is an empty object, and count is going to keep track of how many items are in the stack. So here are all the different methods. We have push. This dot push is going to add a value to the end of the stack. You're going to pass in the value. This dot storage, remember storage is the empty object. At the index this dot count, we are going to add the value. So we're going to put the value on the top of the stack or the end of the stack and then we're just going to increment count 
up one, so now it's showing that we have another item in the stack. The next function, we're going to remove and return the value at the end of the stack, or at the top of the stack, which is this dot pop. This is going to pop an item off. So if this dot count equals equals zero, that means there's nothing in the stack, and we're going to return undefined because there is nothing in the stack. Once we return undefined, we're not going to do anything the rest of this code here because we've already returned from this function. If we're popping off something, we're going to have to decrement the count. So it's a count minus one, so one less. We're going to set the result to this.storage, which is the object for our stack, and at index this.count, which is the last item in the stack. And then we're going to, to delete that item, and we're going to return a result so you get the last item back but it will be deleted off of the stack. And there's just a few more methods. This.size is going to return this.count, which is the number of items in the stack. And then the last function is this.peak, which is going to return the value at the end of the stack, but it will not remove it, like pop. So peak and pop are kind of similar, but pop removes the item and peak does not remove the item. So return this.storage, and then this dot count minus one. Um, this dot count would actually be the index one after the final item because that's where you would add a new item, but you would have to do minus one to get the last item. And if you're peaking, you do not want to pass in the value. So let me take that, that off there. So you only pass in the value when you're pushing in something. Let's see how this would work down here. Okay, we are going to create a variable called myStack, which is a new stack, which is what we just defined up there. We're going to push one onto it to the top, then we're going to push two on the top, so it's just a stack with one and then two. We're going to peak, and we're going to have to console.log this because it's going to just return the top number of the stack, which should be two. Now we're going to pop off two, so it's going to return two again, but it's going to remove it. And then if we peak, we should be back to one. And before we run that, I forgot these extra parentheses here because these are functions and need the parentheses at the end of all functions. So let's try that. Okay, see, we peaked at two, we popped off two, and then when we peaked again, it was one because two was, was removed. Now you can also add other things to the stack. Now we're going to push a string onto the stack, and we're going to check the size, then we're going to peak, and then we're going to pop it off, and then we're going to peak again. So let's see what that does. So we pushed one, we pushed two, we peaked, which showed two, we popped, which popped off two, we peaked again, which showed one, so there's only one thing in the stack, then we pushed free code camp the string, and we console.log the size, and now the size is two. The stack is just one on the bottom, and then free code camp on the top. We're going to peak, which is going to show free code camp. Now we're going to pop, which is going to pop off and show free code camp. And then we're going to peak again, and we'll see that it's just one on the bottom. Well, those are the basics of stack. Thanks for watching. My name is Bo Carnes. Don't forget to subscribe, and remember, use your code for good.